All right, for more on this story, we want to bring in Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey. Congressman, good to see you, and thanks so much for, for coming on. Several topics I want to talk, but let's talk about this one here. Um, Dr. Fauci, the emails. Uh, when questioned about how he relayed the information regarding COVID guidelines to the public, this was during the Trump administration versus the current administration. Here's what he said. Take a look. Science is a dynamic process. So something that you know in January, you make a recommendation or a comment about it. But as you get more and more information, the information leads you to change because that's what science is. Just your reaction to that uh, science when wearing a mask. Did something change with mask wearing? The email, even when you look at it dated, he references January. The emails, I believe, are sent in February or March, to be correct on that. Your reaction to it? Well, the politics changed, so he changed. He's a political scientist, not a scientist. Uh, you know, and if you don't like something Fauci said, just wait, he'll contradict himself. But I think Dr. Fauci should submit to a drug test. I think he should uh, give a small vial of blood and let's find out if he has antivirals. What, would, what advice was he actually taking and internalizing himself? The other thing I think we need to do is we need to fire Fauci. Marjorie Taylor Greene and I have co-sponsored a bill called the Fire Fauci Act. Of course, it would fire him, but the more important thing I think that it does is perform an audit on the programs that he funded while he, and he still is the highest paid uh, employee of the U.S. government, while he was directing the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. What do you, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. And you talk about the Fire Fauci Act that, that you and the Congresswoman are putting together. But what do you think about his new book coming out entitled Truth uh, in so many other words? Your thoughts on that? Um, well, you know, he said, don't be accusatory toward China. I think he's trying to say, don't be accusatory toward Dr. Fauci. Maybe that book is his defense. Uh, but uh, of, you know, his public trial. But I would say it's more likely an attempt by a bumbling bureaucrat who's long ago abandoned sci uh, science to capitalize on his fame and, and turn it into a fortune. You know, one of the things that was talked about in those emails was the mask. Obviously, you brought that up. You yourself, sir, were fined $500 for refusing to wear a mask on the House floor. Um, tell me what the plan is now for the House. Most of the country is reopening. They're dropping the mask mandates. Now you've seen these emails, which don't look good for mask wearing. What's next on the House floor? Well, we're fighting this fight on the House floor because Nancy Pelosi is, is setting a predicate for all the private employers across the United States. Whatever they can get away with on the House floor, they will do to the common people. And it's all about theater because the fine that she imposed on me and nine other members of Congress who had a small revolt last week and went on the floor without our mask, the fine only applies if you're in front of a TV camera i.e., if you're in a hearing room or on the floor of the House, you can be fined $500 for the first infraction, then $2,500 after that, and they take it directly out of your paycheck. But as soon as you walk off the floor, you can take off your mask, and most Democrats take off their mask as soon as they get off the floor. That's, that's how you know it's about theater. And so uh, we just said, you know what, we're going to stand up to Pelosi, not because we're inconvenienced by a mask, but because millions of people, like, they're actually going to try and get vaccine passports. That's our concern, because Nancy Pelosi's position is until 100 percent of Congress is vaccinated, everybody has to wear a mask. I mean, she's going even further than the quacks at CDC are going. Yeah, and that's interesting, and that's been a topic of conversation. Obviously, it's happening in Congress as well amongst uh, localities. Um, before I move from this topic to something else, I, you know, I just wanted to ask you as well, the media's coverage of these emails from Dr. Fauci, um, they, you would say they're left under or up to interpretation, but are they really? If you read them word for word, you could surmise what is actually happening behind the scenes. If you look on certain media outlets, they're covering it for a minute. If you look on the other one, they're covering this story for hours. Why is that? 
because this is a scandal. They're they're covering it up. Look, it's one thing to be hypocritical, to, to say one thing and do another, but when you're in a position of public power and you're setting policy, de facto policy, by your statements in the media, if you're doing something else privately, that's a crime against the public. This is a crime. That's why I say that we need evidence. Let's see what medical treatments Dr. Fauci took. And by the way, hats off to Ron DeSantis. I spoke to him in December. He banned Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks from coming to Florida and speaking to any government employee in the state of Florida. He did that last year when, you know, when Trump was still president and Fauci was working for Trump. Hats off to Ron DeSantis for, for exposing this guy for what he is long ago. And by the way, those emails were obtained under FOIA. Uh, so they weren't leaked, they were actually obtained there just for clarification but, purposes too. One quick thing, uh, I was surprised to find my own name in those emails. Uh, what did it <laughs> say? I didn't see that. Well, somebody was uh, writing to Dr. Fauci and they, they were complaining that Ken Buck, Representative Ken Buck and Representative Andy Biggs had voted against the, one of those stimulus packages. And they said, but they always vote with Congressman Massey anyway, <laughs> so, as if I'm the low water mark or something. Well, look there. Either way, your name got mentioned in it. I wonder if you're in his book as well. You're going to have to wait to see when that comes out in November. <laughs> Congressman, I hope not. Uh, yeah. Good to see you, Congressman Thomas Massey. Thanks so much for coming up. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.